Yeah. Are there, you have other members of your family here with no. you? Because or were you thinking, oh my God, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be so mad that they didn't come today? That's what you were thinking, right? Yes. See that that pivot she did just then. Yeah. Are there other members of your family here? And then just so quickly you could barely notice it. So he says no. So she just pivots it. Oh, you're thinking about them then. That's just part of a medium's repertoire. Yeah, that's exactly. I was just gonna say so that she could be right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what's what was with the oatmeal? Or did you used to make him eat a certain food or something? Okay, this is my meaning. See, my meaning in signs and symbols, it doesn't mean that they're incorrect. It means that it might just have a different meaning for you. So what happened is I saw chocolate all around his face. That's my symbol for somebody was either diabetic or they were not allowed to eat certain foods here in the physical world. So whatever it was that he was not allowed to have, where does the H name come in? Helen, Hank, Harry, someone's last name, or a state they don't have to be passed, they could be here in the physical world. Who just died? I feel like someone just died like two weeks ago, two months ago. Does Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium, actually talk to the dead? In this video, I'm going to be exploring with my good friend, Jen Nizza, the background that we both have as ex-mediums who were saved by God and we're going to analyze Teresa Caputo's videos to show you exactly how she's doing this mediumship. Some of the messages that come through are genuine experiences, real messages. The question is, what's the source of those messages? Where are they coming from? We're also going to show you and point out to you in Teresa's videos, the sleight of hand bag of tricks that all mediums use for stage and group readings that make it appear that they never get anything wrong because they immediately move on to something else. And other insider secrets that mediums do not want you to know to show you exactly how they're doing it. Jen and I are going to spill the beans and show you from an insider perspective exactly how Teresa Caputo is doing her readings. We're going to reveal to you the bag of tricks that all mediums use, whether it's in a group, reading or an individual mediumship reading that makes it appear like they're getting accurate messages. You're getting genuine messages while you're a medium, genuine and details you could not have known. But how are you getting them? That's the question. We're going to show you how the demons actually take advantage of grieving people and hook them in and point them away from Jesus in these mediumship readings. This is not a video to put down Teresa Caputo. We're not doing a gotcha video at all. This is a video to glorify God and to warn people, especially Christians, away from any medium, Teresa Caputo or any medium, because that is not what God's will is for us to deal with grief. And I want to thank you, Jen, for joining me today for this video, and especially since before you were saved, you actually knew Teresa Caputo. Thank you for having me, Doreen. And this is a little difficult for me. I did know Teresa. Uh, we weren't, you know, the best of friends or anything like that, but we uh, we were in the same circles and we did read each other. And I just want to say that I continue to pray for her and that she would be set free just like you and I were. And I appreciate you saying that this is not a gotcha video. It's not. And I think that it would be important to mention that because Doreen and I know, because you and I know that we were headed to eternal condemnation because of mediumship, because of divination, and of course, mainly not being in Christ, being a slave to that bondage, but that is exactly what it is. And psychic mediumship is direct demonic communication and our hearts go out to those who are still practicing psychic mediumship. So we will pray for Teresa and I pray that everybody watching this video today will keep that in mind and pray for her as well. So we're going to take a look at Teresa Caputo's stage readings on television and we will be stopping the video to give explanations. I felt, and this validates also the bond. 
um, he made me feel like I heard brother, but I felt son. So for you, he was your baby brother, and he looked up to you as yes. a father or a role model. Yes. And that he died the, leaving the physical world very tragically and unexpected. Yes. So your biggest fear, and what you pray to God every day, is that his soul is safe and at peace with God because he steps forward and he stands with the Blessed Mother. That is just my validation that his soul is at peace with God because I am a practicing Catholic, right. so they show me things in my frame of reference. I think we should the take a pause there, Dee. As One thing I'd like to point out, if I may, is the constant bringing up of God's name in something that is completely against God. So that's one way we know that you are not dealing with God at all. You are practicing divination right now. You are uh, you are practicing psychic mediumship. Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12 clearly condemns talking to mediums. God is clear about that. Also, she brings up that she is a practicing Catholic. There is no way a devout Catholic would practice psychic mediumship because they certainly do know that it is condemned by God. You've become your own, you, you subscribe to your own authority, not to God. So I can be a medium, I can talk about God. And all of that is very attractive to someone who is grieving. The only praying going on here is pray, P-R-E-Y, if you know what I mean. Mm, yeah, that's it's really sad. And gosh, bringing back such memories of me also invoking, actually using the Lord's name in vain, breaking the third commandment by saying God told me during my readings and saying, okay, Jesus is here and using so-called prayers of protection uh, before my readings. It's using the Lord's name in vain and it's a sin. It's breaking a commandment that's she needs to repent for it gives false reassurance to the person she's reading exactly and the lord's prayer the catholics will call it the our father was something that i know for a fact she and i were both doing and taught to do as a as a protection tool or a protection prayer before going into divination. And the Bible says that you cannot drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. So there's no way that you, by you saying the Lord's prayer, it's going to protect you as you're opening the door to demons right now. You're going directly against God. That's so true. Yeah. So it's false reassurance and it's breaking the commandment to not use the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you can't you can't pray for protection to do a sin. It just doesn't work that way. God's not going to protect you while breaking his commandments. Can you imagine? We'd be doing that. <laughs> we, you never even would have to come to Christ, would you? Then what would the what would the sacrifice on the cross have been for? If I can just say, hey, uh, please protect me. Please forgive me as I'm about to go into the sin. It's Yeah, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, it makes no sense. This is rough to watch because just yeah. like you know what I mean, I, I mean, it's bringing back memories. Probably at that time, if somebody was watching us, they would have said similar things as we're about to say about about what's happening here. What about all the questions? You notice all the questions? Uh, how does this pertain to you? Did this happen this way? It's all, who's who's actually providing the information when you do that? So there is a mix here. I'm, and, and again, yeah. I'm not saying that she's a fraud or a phony like you. I absolutely know for a fact that she connects to uh, demons, that she's speaking to demons. I know that. Um, we should mention at this point that demons masquerade as angels of light. They masquerade as your deceased loved ones. They masquerade as the voice of God. They masquerade as the voice of the Holy Spirit, or some people call it the higher self. And so the demons have studied humanity, and they know enough about humans to accurately say things that we as mediums couldn't know. And and yet, as you said, she's fishing and this is the part that I wanted to replay here because, oh, I know this this method too well from my past before I was saved. He steps forward and he stands with the Blessed Mother. That is just my validation that his soul is at peace with God because I am a practicing Catholic. Right. So they show me things in my frame of reference. But is the father also departed as well? No. Uh, or the grandfather because he holds hands with a father figure or an uncle to validate. Okay, there's the fishing right there. So she's got a sense, a real sense, that's a father figure. And I remember, you probably do too, Jen, where you'd get this sense. Okay, this is, I'm getting the, the feeling or a thought or a vision 
of a father figure. And so you just, you've learned as a, as a public medium to just say whatever you get. And then if the person won't take it, you keep going with that to find someone else who'll take it. Do you remember doing that? Yes, definitely. I do remember that. And sure enough, somebody will pick up on it and oh, then sure. you'll, keep going, you'll keep going from there. She mentioned, she mentioned talking about this deceased, deceased person's soul being at peace with God. I think it's important to mention here that the Bible also says that you don't communicate, the dead do, do not communicate with the living. So she does not know at all where his little brother is or where his father is. That would, of course, depend upon their relationship in, with Christ, whether they were saved or not as to where they're going. But it's amazing that you have that sense, and I did too, that you kind of make up this subjective heaven. They call it the other side. I don't know if you called it that too, Doreen, like so-and-so is coming through from the other side, whatever this this ambiguous other side is. And it, it's such a perversion of the Bible, of God's mm -hmm. word, of, of what's true. And these poor people are, they're just, they're so sad. And grabbing onto that too, let's be honest about it, Dee. When she goes into, well, whose father? I don't know if that's how she just said it. I forgot. Uh, there's a father figure or a father who's passed away. When you're in a room like that, Doreen, or like in the group readings that we did, even for me, if they were like 10, 15 people, odds are pretty good that a father, grandfather, uncle, stepfather, somebody will have passed away connected to one of those people in the room. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, um, it's, it's a coin toss. You know, if this person doesn't have their father, then that person will. But right. she's she she is going within. She's getting answers from within. That's not how we are to get answers. Um, she's also said that he's with the Blessed Mother. Now, just a couple things about that. She said it's her own symbology, which each of us as mediums would have our own symbols. Like if I saw, I, I used to get visions of a plate of spaghetti, and that was my personal symbol that that person had a lot of drama because I it was a spaghetti western. I know it's really stupid. But that was my symbol, or, or I'd see a nurse's hat symbolically on people who were uh, professional healers. So okay. she said she sees this person with the Blessed Mother. But we need to just point out that the Blessed Mother is the earthly mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we revere her. But she is a human being. She was not part of the Holy Trinity. So she's a deceased human. And we do not communicate with any deceased humans. To be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. As you said, the Bible says that the deceased cannot communicate with us. And the Bible also says that Jesus is our only mediator between humanity and our Father God, not Mary. It never says in the Bible to pray through Mary, as Roman Catholicism teaches, and Episcopalian that I was part of for two years. So just a lot going on here to unpack. And we've only gone into one minute of her readings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the original person that she's talking to who lost his little brother, tragically, um, and you can tell she's got what we call a hit because he's crying. That was always our sign that, okay, I, I got this right. And it's kind of cold hearted that you would, um, you would empathize with them, but in a way you would say, okay, they're crying. So I got it right. So there's a pridefulness there too. And so she didn't get it right with him about the father. And then she moves right on to grandfather. I was surprised about that. I, if, when I was doing it, I would have stuck with father because they were two different energies that I felt two different demon energies. Um, but she's, she's kind of going in the same category. She's going to find someone else. Like you said, Jen, statistically, someone's lost their father or grandfather in this audience. Let's see what she does. View that he is not alone. Okay. Uh, who, who are you? How do you understand this? Do you understand the father figure, or how, how do you understand this? No, I'm just thinking from past what I've been through. Oh, okay. You have to understand. They make me feel. Wait, wait. Why'd you grab the mic from him? I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> but it's valid. What happens is spirit makes me feel certain things of where it affects someone else. What is whatever is being said, and this is why my live shows affect so many people because you're able to connect with so many different things even though i am not looking directly at you it is validating that he knows how you feel that you could have been able to prevent his departure do you understand that yes and he says absolutely not i want to thank you for loving me supporting me and always being that father figure to me he says and don't you ever forget that he also just told me that you had a dream of him yeah
Okay, I got to stop it right here because these are parts of every medium's repertoire, giving the encouraging, comforting message from beyond, supposedly. Um, but it's not really from that person. It's just part of your repertoire that you would reassure the person. And I am horrified, and I've repented for this and apologized, that people would come to me all the time and say, is my loved one in heaven? And I realize now that the context was that they knew that person wasn't a saved believer in Jesus Christ. But I didn't believe in hell at the time. So I would always say, oh, of course they're in heaven, because that's what New Agers believe, is everybody goes to heaven. We were universalists. And, and I did not know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Jesus made heaven. All things, all things were made through Jesus. So you and I in heaven were made through Jesus, his heaven, his rules. His, he set this up. We cannot get to heaven without him. So uh, when she gives this reassurance, oh, yeah, uh, thank you for caring for him. That's just part of a medium's repertoire. I know it's comforting. It, it, it probably hooks people into mediumship, don't you think, Jen? Oh, 100%. And that's the point, to get people away from God, to get people away from the truth, which is Jesus Christ who is our true comfort and peace, it will, this looks very attractive. It reminds me of, you know, listen, you know, a serpent with a, you know, the sugar coming off the fang. That's what it reminds me of. And, and she actually is that type of, you know, it's very charming, very charming, very comforting, like you said, very encouraging. And I think people need to know also that uh, the devil is a counterfeit. He's a cheap imitation of the real deal, which of course is God. And so, by giving these these encouraging messages or you know uh, statements that she's making, that's where that counterfeit comes in, right? Because we should be going to God for everything, surrendering everything to Him. But this here is the counterfeit, the copycat, the devil's copycatting, just so that you would think it, and then he throws in those extra things, the God words, the heaven words, the encouragement and the comfort. She is she is communicating with demons. I mean, we're, again, we're not saying that she's uh, playing polar games here or anything like that. So people need to know that demons do down, I, I call it kind of like downloading information, just like you said, whether it's the symbols or, or what have you, that, you know, when you use the words around, it will make sense to the person you're talking to, but it's a, it's a counterfeit. It's condemned by God and it is extremely uh, dangerous to participate, consult or practice. It is. And if you're watching this and the Holy Spirit is convicting you, great. We love when the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. So the Bible tells us to, to confess our sins, confess them to God and to repent, which means to turn away from the sin. Pray for God to give you the strength to not want to go to mediums anymore. And then don't, don't go to mediums anymore. Just delete their phone number from your phone and just stop because it's a sin to go to mediums. But it's forgiven when we confess and repent. Amen. All right, let's go back to this train wreck here. <laughs> it's a reminder. This I just want you to know if you're watching this, this is so painful for Jen and myself, especially for Jen since she knew Teresa. And it's bringing up old memories for us. But we're doing this for the team because as ex-mediums, we know what she's doing. So we can give you the screen by screen interpretation here where he told you that he was fine and that he was okay. He goes, and I looked as fly as ever, Teresa, in that dream. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so I just have to stop there. The, I look so fly. So she's doing the um, vernacular of his culture, and I think that's really racist and offensive. And That was horrible. And, right? and I'm going to point out even on the first part of that. Oh, he's saying you had a dream about him. How many people dream? about somebody they lost you miss them you're thinking about them you the odds of you having a dream and again I'm I know I'm coming off like maybe the really bad guy here but I, you know I'm not saying again I'll just last time I say it I promise I'm not saying she's a fake or a phony but you have to realize looking back at this it's like we we did these things too so it's almost like that hook right D like oh something that is almost bound to be true the, you know, having a dream, and then you push through the next thing, the demon will give you the next thing, which will really be the lie. The Apostle John gives us the test to test the spirits, if they're really from God or from the Antichrist. And 
And the big pivot is, does the spirit confess Jesus biblically? And you'll notice she doesn't. I didn't, Jen didn't, no medium does. Why? Because the demons do not want people to go to the real Jesus because they know if we do, we stop following demons. So a house divided against itself cannot stand. The demons are never going to be a cheerleader for the real biblical Jesus ever. But that would be his personality. I also want spirit to channel with that personality to validate that it is them. So you know that they're safe and at peace. And he says, I don't want you to carry not one burden. He also makes me feel like, though, was there a lot of questions surrounding his departure? Yeah. Um, because I mean, yeah. he shows me puzzle pieces. And when I put the pieces together, they don't fit. So that just means there's a lot of things going on that we might not don't seem right. Or there's a lot of questions. Yes. And he says at the end of the day. I'm sorry, I think this is a really important part, a word that I used as well when doing readings was validation or uh, validate. And that was when the demons would give me a piece of information that absolutely 100% was true. And it was true because they have seen it. They know it. So anything a demon has seen, a familiar spirit, aka fallen angel, uh, that's just all the, the terms for them. When they have seen something, they can report it with accuracy to the reader. And it will be things that maybe other people weren't even in the room. Because a lot of people will ask, well, how do you know that? How did the medium know that? How, if this is demonic, why would they want to help you? They don't want to help you. They just want you to keep going over there to the medium. And they will report accurate information. It's never about how accurate the information that the medium is giving. It's about where is the information coming from, God or the devil. Yeah, it is. And th this is an example of a vague mediumship reading. I'm sure she's got more details in some of her other readings. But um, I would get incredibly incredible details, um, names of people who died. I even did group mediumship uh, in Athens, Greece once, and I got Greek, Greek names in my mind of people who had died. And they weren't your usual Greek names either. These were very unusual and long names. And, and I would get um, breeds of dogs that had died to, connected to that person and just real incredible details that the, you're right, Jen, that the demons would feed me as a validation so the person would get hooked in and point away from Jesus on the cross who died for us because we're all sinners, all of us, and he took the wrath that we deserve on the cross. It would point us away from that and point us to ourselves, to our deceased loved ones, and to the medium as the source of comfort. Day, let the justice be that my soul is at peace. So even though we have questions, that doesn't mean that he's not at peace, and more importantly, that he is not safe with God. Do you understand that? Okay. Did he also always wear baseball hats? Yes. But did he wear it differently? Because he turned it around. He yeah. goes, tell him he ain't wearing his hat right. And he like, sleep, but he turned your hat around. But that would be him, right? Right, exactly. He also tells me that there were certain things that you kept of his, whether they were t-shirts, and there's something about a jacket. Yes. Oh, do you have other members of your family here with no. you? Because or were you thinking, oh my God, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be so mad that they didn't come today. That's what you were thinking, right? Yes. See that that pivot she did just then. Yeah. Are there other members of your family here? And then just so quickly you can barely notice it. So he says no. So she just pivots it. Oh, you're thinking about them then. That's just part of a medium's repertoire. Yeah, that's exactly I was just gonna say, so that she could be right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad I'm not part of this life anymore. <laughs> too deep <laughs> validating Ooh. for you sir that nothing has been left unsaid with you and your younger brother know that everything that you have said to him in your own personal thoughts and mm -hmm. no prayers please know that he has heard and he wants to thank you for the amazing and beautiful tribute that you gave him because he salutes you okay. so however you chose to lay him to rest or what was said he wants to thank you do you understand that? even if you yes. didn't speak oh give me a break everybody's got a tribute every deceased person has some sort of if not a absolute funeral has some sort of tribute so that's like the old cliche shooting fish in a barrel of course and this poor guy i pray that he's not moved away from the one true god after this reading i mean he seems like he's got such a big heart and you know she's she's talking about god and he's nodding to it as if he might be a christian i i pray that this has not pointed him away amen me too. Uh, 
Okay, it's hard to get through this video. Let's try. Or we could do this for like four hours. You for that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. But I am. Gonna, I do want to talk about the father that is departed, because the father keeps stepping forward and he keeps uh, laboring my breathing in the chest, and then he keeps telling me that no one was prepared for me to die. Because then he said to me, "Can you believe this is how I died? It was almost like, let's just say, if he was diagnosed with cancer or something, and then he died of pneumonia or he died of a cold. Like, how could that be? Is that correct?" This is um, your dad. Yes. So I first want to say that I'm sorry that you have to go through so many milestones without your dad. So, um, and he says, I don't want you to feel that you should have stopped or done anything different in your life because if, if you thought that I was going to die, does that make sense? Okay, so Jen, twice we saw that um, she, she told people as a way of comforting them that don't feel guilty about my death. And that's a part of grief for everybody is you feel guilty. Everyone, even if it's a sudden death, even if it's an accident or something or a suicide, especially you as a survivor always feel like, what could I have done to prevent this? And so she's giving these so-called messages from beyond saying, don't hold on to that guilt. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Everybody's going to have some sort of guilt. I didn't see you enough. I didn't call you enough. I should have been there. Everybody is going to go through that. And here's the thing. She's talking to demons. She is not speaking to God or any sort of, you know, she's not talking to the Holy Spirit. She's not in truth. So anything that she's saying, and that's what people really need to know, uh, what's coming out of her mouth is coming from demons who serve the liar. They are liars. The devil is the originator of lies. We see that in John 8, 44. When you're communicating with demons, you are communicating with liars, with darkness, and with evil. We are all going to face guilt after somebody passes away. It is natural, just like you mentioned, Dee. We are going to wish we called more. We are going to wish that we uh, saw the person more times. But when you, when you get the reading and she's saying, well, you don't have to feel guilty. Well, because that's not from God, you're going to come up to it again. It's going to come back again because you're not giving it to God. You're not, you're not entrusting it to the only one who can help you, heal you, comfort you. We see in Psalm 34, 18, God is near to the brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. We can give him our grief and he will help us. He will carry us in our grief. But if you keep going here and listening to these lies, you're going to have to make the phone call to get the next reading, the next reading, and the next reading, because that guilt won't go away. That's such a good point. Only God is our source of comfort. And I love that you mentioned Psalms. I think the Psalms can be something that's so healing for the heart, because David and the other psalmists, they just poured their heart out to God. And that's the model for us to do. Instead of going to a medium, we need to go to God. I really think getting on our knees and just pleading with God, telling him everything. And that includes if you're angry, some people get angry with God that's, that their loved one died. Tell God that he knows that already. Just tell him that so he can help you with your heart. He can help you to trust God's divine will, even if it doesn't match your will. And know that sometimes, very often, God allows us to suffer and puts us through trials so that we will lean on him and not on ourselves. Second Corinthians 1, 8 through 9 really spells that out. And God knows the hour when each of us will depart. That's not up to us. We would have preferences. I wish that this person would have lived longer, but that's not up to us. That's up to God. And that's the whole point of all this is to learn to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, including things that we don't want to trust, including things we don't want. Absolutely. And it's the new age is so subjective. Anything really apart from everything apart from God is subjective, to be honest with you, because he is our firm foundation, a foundation of truth of which we can stand upon that doesn't change. If you go to mediums, if you're going to tarot cards, if you're going to self-help books, they're going to change. Everything they say is going to change. This medium will say this. This medium will say that. Self-help books will be circulated new ones each year, and it will always change. And you're going to have to keep going and going. You will be forever on that hamster wheel until you come to Christ, who is truth, who is the sure, certain truth, the promise keeper. Honestly, he's true to his word. His word is uh, sufficient for us.
Amen, sister. And I also want to apologize that I made books and cards about mediumship. And that would be part of our repentance to get rid of any books, any cards, any apps, anything that has to do with mediumship. Just get it out of your house, get rid of it, repent and turn to God. Psalms is the book you want. Just turn to Psalms in prayer and know that God cares about you and he's close to the brokenhearted. You, you can see why people make fun of mediums now, though, right? Because they're asking so many questions. Who's out there with the J name? Who's the father figure? Who's this? Who, who, who? Like, who's giving the information? I totally get the jokes. Yeah. yeah. And you're so desperate when you're grief stricken that you just, anything, you'll just grasp at straws. And what do you, th and the audience knowing most likely knew that she was going to be on these shows. And even when, I know we made a video about Sylvia Brown when, and she would go on the Montel Williams. People knew they were signing up for this and probably going in with a heart filled with pain and a heart filled with grief and hoping with all their might that she would say one thing that they can grab onto so that because in their mind, it would be them uh, regaining a connection yeah. with somebody who had died. It's so it's, sad. It is. It's, it is the absolute... Um, taking advantage of people who are grieving. Yes. Okay, let's go to her next video clip, shall we? Spirit's coming through right now. Oh, there's, there, there's always spirit. Okay. I don't know who, did somebody lose their husband over here? Who lost the husband? Because this is before, okay. Now, I just want to stop and say that when I was in front of an audience, and often it would be hundreds of people in a big auditorium, and I couldn't see them, the lights would be down, and I would get bodily signals that it's over here and i would hear a name and i'd hear like stephanie and it, then i'd get specifics it's stephanie with an ie and i would feel over here and people would be on the other side of the audience raising their hand i'm stephanie and, I, and i'd insist it's over here just like Teresa did so that's something the demons do to direct mediums they use their bodies because when I was standing over here, this is where I got confused when I went with the younger male before with the husband, because I heard husband over there, and I knew I was over here, so and I had switched. Um, okay. So, um, unfortunately, you lost your husband. Yes. Your husband, Stefan, was your husband ill prior to his passing? Oh, yes. Because what happens is, you know, people say, oh, of course he was ill. But you know what? What I've learned is being a medium, people leave the physical world in many different ways. And the first thing that your husband said was that he wanted you to know how much he appreciated every unselfish thing you did for him he says i wish i told you that more here in the physical world he said you loved and cared for me in a way that left i was able to leave the physical world with dignity and grace and you're not a nurse okay just i know we're sounding re repetitious here but she is too this is part of the medium's bag of tricks the repertoire you cared for them before they died you always say that when someone was sick and you might be getting real demonic signals like i would sometimes see a sign that they would rub their feet and that was what they did but if you watch enough of these videos with Teresa or any medium if you have old videos of me doing stage readings and tv readings you'll see that we say the same thing over and over again yeah it's really tugging on the heartstrings yeah is that correct correct and he says but you gave me that and he says and i want to thank you for that the day that he became sick you dropped everything and cared for him and you know what he just said to oh i your husband he's funny he goes because i like them to communicate with the personality goes you know what i could be a bit stubborn Teresa." i go oh really <laughs> now what's what was with the oatmeal or did you used to make him eat a certain food or something okay this is my meaning my me okay okay she just said no and when you're getting a reading publicly, the pressure is on to please the medium by saying yes. So for that sweet elderly lady to say, no, I didn't give him special meals or oatmeal, which is such a generalized guess. I just have to say <laughs> she might have seen oatmeal or felt it, but that was just really generalized. And for her to say no, and then she's going to immediately move on. When you become a professional medium, you're moving at light speed. You don't you don't even consider that you could be wrong. You just keep going. Meaning and signs and symbols, it doesn't mean that they're incorrect. It means that it might just have a different meaning for you. So what happened is I saw chocolate all around his face. That's my symbol for somebody was either diabetic or they were not allowed to eat certain foods here in the physical world. So whatever it was that he was not allowed to have, because he just now showed me himself. Uh, 
I'm so sorry, but I think this needs to be pointed out. And I think we, I think we can all relate to this. Those of us who used to do readings, there's always a justification for something that was wrong or a prediction that doesn't come true or whatever. There's always a justification because of course she can't be wrong. Her symbols aren't wrong. This isn't wrong. That isn't wrong. You can say no up in <laughs> to Timbuktu <laughs> and it, it just really can't be. It just doesn't mean it's wrong. There's a justification and people need to know that because you're still, you're hooked in if you've heard one thing that made sense to you, one thing that resonates with you, but you could hear 99 things that are completely off the charts, wrong, and you're still buying it. So please be aware of that and um, understand that uh, that's just part of the demonic communication and practice of mediumship. So let's just take a look at the people around her and how a professional medium would react. So you see the woman behind the elderly woman who lost her husband above her. She's got her arms folded, her legs crossed. She's got a frown on her face. That would be a skeptic. So you would never talk to that person. You would move next to the lady next to her with the kind of zebra stripes. And she's got her hand to her. She's crying, obviously. And you would say, oh, you must be the daughter because she's a little younger. She's got darker hair. You, as a professional medium, you would go right to her next because she's real emotional, and that makes for a very dramatic stage reading. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. I mean, it's it's cold and callous and selfish of the medium, mixed with some truth, and that's how this is all done. Absolutely. Full face, rosy cheeks. That's my symbol for where someone's physical appearance has changed. So whatever it was that he was um, not able to prior to his departure, he left with the physical body and he's able to do on the other side. Now, I want to talk about who's wearing the picture of someone. Well, there's like a bunch. I feel like someone has like a bunch of like charms or like a bunch of um, oh, articles here. wearing around your neck. Yeah. But are they people that have... Okay, I just got to say, that's so vague. <laughs> She starts with, she wants a locket with a photo. She doesn't get it. So she changes it to charms. Yeah, that's, again, that goes back to, since I can never be wrong, I have to change it, twist it. And it just becomes so subjective. How do you even fall for it? Either it is this thing or it isn't this thing. But having said that, I also want to mention that 99.999% uh, in my opinion of psychic mediums don't have bad intentions they actually want to help people, and that is the enemy's way of using what I believe something that God instilled in many of us, which is compassion, empathy, and uh, kindness, and he'll use it. So we're not saying that she has bad intentions and she's doing all these things because she wants to hurt people and trick people. And do it. No, not at all. This is exactly how it goes. You want to help. There's this va these vague components but this is how the demons do it. Like you said before, there's a little bit of truth mixed into this. This, Yes, exactly. It's it's vague and people have wishful thinking. They, they desperately want a message from the other side. So they are willing to compromise their logic by saying, okay, that must be me. It's right. so sad. It's just tragic. Departed. No. There have to be people that are departed. Is your mom passed? Yeah. Okay, so just know that your mom is not, because I said, well, then it has to be someone that passed. She says, well, that's not fair. She said, all you asked was for a good validation that, that, I, that my daughter would know that it was me. So I said, well, usually people wear things. She goes, well, that's not fair. <laughs> so, know that, so now your mother's arguing with me and telling me that my signs and symbols aren't fair. <laughs> but would that be your mother making her presence known? She wants to make sure that you you know that she is still with you. She wants to talk about her engagement ring. Do you have the ring? Did you change the ring or give it to someone else? We changed the ring. Perfect. Know that is your mother's way of acknowledging that she supports the choice and decision of the changing of the ring. Now, whose brother died or brother-in-law? Did he fall or how did he? Again, the having the heirloom ring, I mean, who doesn't have that? And when you don't bury people with their rings, normally you keep them. And it's really common to have a setting changed. So vagueness. And then she goes to a follow-up question, doesn't get a hit with that woman and moves right on. One of the things that really concerns me about stage readings is that you leave people raw and vulnerable as you move on to the next person. So here's this woman, she just opened her up about her mother and she's probably hungry for more messages, even though they're demonic messages, not really her mom. And she moves right on. It's callous. 
it, it oh definitely it is and i know we're not there yet and we're gonna but we're gonna see uh the gratitude that kelly and michael have for hey thank you so much for doing this and coming on here except then these people who are left short what they're gonna have to do most likely or think about doing is either trying to book an appointment with her for x million amount of dollars later and you know booked on the calendar you know 17 months in advance or whatever or then they're going to decide that they need it now because instant gratification is a big part of going for readings and they'll start going and visiting readings and what if some of these people hadn't even seen a reader before and now they're going to feel drawn to doing it this is how the devil works this is disgusting and I am so sorry that I was ever a part of I really like you said before thank you Jesus for setting us free and not being a pawn for the devil that's what that's what's happening here so much from the tragedy I feel like I fell and then I died so you have to understand I like spirit to piggyback okay because what happens is even if I say something and I never look in your direction but something is said that you can connect with and place in your life or connect with your loved ones please accept as a message from them it happens all the time spirit has me say something I just don't like to stay focused on it I pass on it and oh every time someone will say oh my god I knew exactly what you were talking about I got it I remembered so what they I really don't like when people say the Lord's name in vain like that. Right. When right. they say um, what she just said, oh, OMG, she said the phrase. Um, to me, that shows just no respect for God at all. Amen. Did yeah. you catch that woman in the audience? What was she yeah. doing? Was yeah, she, she, she was saying, well, maybe, maybe, maybe. She was so desperate to get a message that she was yeah. willing to accept something that wasn't fitting her. Yeah. Yeah is so sad might be piggy but who passed from the blood disease we have another type of disease in my oh is it either from head to toe where does the liver come in or something about a blockage okay so just know he's stepping forward who's being tested for other things uh, for the disease yes or, or, or for anything i feel like that now we perfect because i keep feeling like there's something about testing and he's talking about testing and he says everything is going to be fine can i I'm going to say this, and I don't know how to interpret it, so you're going to have to interpret on how it fits. I feel like, yes, things are genetic, but I feel like with this, it was almost like a freaky thing that happened or that he contracted. Does, does that make sense? Or do hey. you understand that? She's telling somebody that somebody's health is going to be okay. That's a prediction. That's future information. And what's really important to know out there, guys, is demons do not know the future. They're good guessers, meaning they're good predictors because they've been watching, they've been studying for ages. These are old creatures that are familiar with mankind, with patterns, and so on and so forth. Now, if that person, for whatever reason, didn't turn out to be fine there'd be a justification for that and the person may very well still go back to a reader which is just staying in disobedience to god i just wanted to point that out well who passed yeah. from the chest they just labored my breathing who passed from the chest i just got a blow to the chest and i couldn't breathe for like a second that's my because they're they're trying to make their presence known it's a lady right back there that's somebody over there hand. where does the blow to the chest come in was right in front of you yeah. who died right in front of no no <laughs> she's trying to get an accident like someone who was crushed with a blow to the chest that as a medium there's a completely different set of information that comes through with a heart attack yeah yes that did seem like <laughs> but yes, when, that... when you're on tv and i did live tv i used to do morning i remember one i used to do a lot in texas it was a live morning show so this is taped, so it could be edited afterwards. But the live ones, there's such pressure to get things right because you know that there's skeptics in the audience there and also watching. And so she's just going to continue going on and not even, not even twitch if she gets something wrong. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, and she has to put on this air of confidence to uh, almost recover when she is wrong too right because if you do it confidently it's like no 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 i know this is you know that's your problem not my problem <laughs> yeah. and i actually learned that technique from a medium i used to tour with him gordon smith he was known as the psychic barber from scotland and he he would get such details he'd get addresses he would get i mean just 
I'm more details than any medium I'd ever been around. And I was around the big famous ones all the time. And Gordon Smith, I remember one time on stage, he said, uh, you lost a German shepherd. I, I'm just paraphrasing. He says, you lost a German shepherd to this person in the audience. And the person said, no, I didn't. He goes, yes, you did. You just forgot. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. That's how he would give his readings. He would just stick with it. And he would, you're wrong if you don't take, take what I'm saying. Wow. Yes. I did not know. How do you forget you had a German shepherd? I don't know. That was just his technique. And I learned that from him, from being around him so much. Right over here. Okay. And who's this? Here you go. Died right in front of you. Have to, this does not mean that this is not for you. I'm just piggybacking. Mm -hmm. I just go with the stronger energy that's going to communicate. So your dad died right in front of you. Is that correct? Yeah. He wants you to know that he needs you to release any negative emotion. Mm -hmm. Only if, should have, could have, would have, that my dad would still be here. Because he showed me my symbol for even if someone knew CPR. It's almost like, oh, my God, I save everyone's life. I could do CPR. But I couldn't save my own dad. It wasn't your responsibility to save him. Did you tell your father that he didn't look good the day before? Or were you like, Dad, are you okay? Yeah. He says, I need you to release this burden that you carry. He says, I take responsibility. But your dad, he's a great guy. I, I, was he a sports fanatic? Um, he likes sports, but he Because was... he's more interested in Michael right now. Um, <laughs> I go, he goes, Teresa, this is so cool. I go, I know, isn't this amazing? We high five. Yeah, you go, Dad. That's what I'm talking about. Isn't it amazing? Does, does, he have have anything to to say, does he have anything to say to me? <laughs> I know, apparently not. <laughs> apparently he doesn't know this model stuff here because he's, he's just interested. He's like, this is so exciting. I'm like, I know. Don't worry about Kelly. She's just beautiful. <laughs> exactly. But, but I just said to him, but see, I always like spirit to give a message of personality, of who they were, again, to really validate that it is them, because I get what I do is hard to understand right. or embrace. So, and anyone can say, I want you to release that. So what he's acknowledging is that doesn't want you to carry that burden or guilt. And he says, I, he goes, isn't this cool? I go, yeah. He goes, I get to see a sports, someone famous. And I'm like, what about talking to your daughter? <laughs> is it your birthday or a special celebration that is coming up or just passed? Uh, my mother-in-law's birthday just passed. Is that you? Yeah. Oh, and you're Hello, she's wearing the New York Giants shirt. <laughs> I love it. So no, just wishing you a happy birthday. That I used to do the birthday thing too. I don't know if you did, did that, Jen. How odd, a birthday. Yeah. Somebody had a birthday. Yeah. Also, she was saying she was validating. She likes to validate the personality. And I understand that because you get that sense of that person, which would really trick you into thinking it's that person. But um, I don't know if we're seeing a pattern here. The guilt, the guilt and the shame that got brought up again. So we're seeing a pattern with that. And you mentioned that before, tugging on those heartstrings. This woman doesn't seem so convinced, though, that the personality came through, if you know what I mean, because uh, she said he was a sports fanatic. And yeah, then, and, and the woman didn't take that. She goes, he was sort of. And then she right away diverts it to the host, Michael, who's a sports guy, and is kind of uh, stroking his ego. And so the focus goes off of her not taking that, that he was a sports fanatic, and puts it on the host. Wow. Yeah. And the, you can see in this, these, this video, too, that Kelly and Michael, the hosts of the show, they want her to be right because it makes them look good. Mm -hmm. So they're working hard on the audience trying to find people who've got their hands raised so that she can get accurate, seemingly accurate readings. And then that makes them look better. Right. Oh, mediumship. <laughs> okay, let's go back. Teresa, do you Thank you. For, we have time sure. for one more. Sure, sure, one sure, more. sure. Who's the, um, who lost the daughter? Who passed from the brain? Aneurysm, brain tumor, Alzheimer's, dementia. I'm right here. Who's that? Uh, no, it's a female. Female? Then I have to be right up here. Who's, who? Want me to run up? Yeah. Should she got, have Alzheimer's or a dementia? Up. Okay, so no, this is her way of acknowledging. Now, were you very young when she was sick? So she wants you to know that she knew that you were there. And every time that you sat there Thank you. and held her hand, I did. and you treated her as if she wasn't sick, is that correct? Yes. She wants to thank you for that. She says, I want to thank you for not making me feel sick. Now, you still have an article of her clothing or something that she knitted or crocheted? Uh, yeah, I have all of her um, handkerchiefs. Perfect. She wants to thank you for keeping those things that have no monetary value but meant the world to her or, more importantly, to you. Uh.
beg, beg, beg. Who doesn't have an article of clothing or something of sentimental value from their deceased loved one? It's almost like where where do you even want to start with the last? What was that? Sixty seconds or something? Or four? We can't even get through. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, also, what about I? You know, and again, I'm not saying. Listen, maybe the this this familiar spirit was indicating to Teresa something about the brain. But how do you go from aneurysm to Alzheimer's to dementia? An aneurysm is completely different than confusion. But that got me because it's like, okay, why not then do... So let me ask you this, Dee. Was it the pressure from being on the stage that makes her start fishing for the exact brain issue rather than just saying, hey, um, I have a mother figure coming through. She passed away from something with the brain or was afflicted by a brain illness towards the end of her life. Why not just say that? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I would get body indications of what happened to the person. If they had a heart attack, I would feel something right in my chest or I would see a heart. And if it was something in the head, I would feel it up here. So I, I do understand that she's fishing for whatever happened to the brain. Cause that's what I would do. But you're right, completely different medical uh, diagnosis. And then the part that I just want to acknowledge that she's talking to a very young woman. She, what is she? She looks like she's maybe 20. And she says, were you very young when he, <laughs> when she was sick? No, she was 80 years. Never, don't even. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, duh, she's already young. Of course, she was young when she was sick. And then did you hold her hand? Of course. You I, hold hands with people who are your loved ones. When they're sick, you hold their hands. You just do that. So vague, vague, vague. Yeah, I was just asking because like you, I also received information specifically about how people passed away or afflictions that they had towards the end or something that would really stand out about them that you would, at least you would think that that was your loved one. So that's why I was asking, is it this pressure from being on the stage but it just ends up making everything worse i yeah you know yeah it's it's a mess it's a hot mess but you've got your people with wishful thinking and they're going to grab on to any little nugget that would make them think that their loved ones are still alive still in their lives they're still going to set a table at the holiday meal for their loved one to be there at that chair even though they're deceased and they're still going to talk to their deceased loved ones even though the bible condemns talking to de dead people including your grandmother including your deceased spouse you're not supposed to talk to dead people um, and we can't they can't hear you as well and i know that sounds cruel i didn't believe that for most of my life but the bible is god's truth it's inerrant and it tells us that it's dangerous to talk to dead people why for exactly the reason Jen and I are warning you today, demons take advantage of this and they'll swoop in and say, hey, I'm your Uncle Tom. Hey, I'm your deceased spouse. Hey, I'm your deceased mother. And they will point you away from Jesus, who is the only one who can give you eternal life and forgive you for your sins. And that really should speak to the person who may think this is really just one big joke. I mean, we're talking about these, you know, the parts of it, but we understand the reality of psychic mediumship, of divination. This has been around for ages. God is clear about it in his word. So for the people out there that aren't in either camp, see, they don't subscribe to mediumship, they actually, or, and certainly uh, they're not like us saved, born again believers. They think that this just isn't real. They So I want to be careful with that because Doreen and I are former mediums. So we, we're looking at this and we're just realizing things and pointing things out to you. But in no way, shape, or form should you ever be spiritually ignorant, should you ever think that this is not real, that everybody is just a charlatan or a huckster trying to make a dime. Please don't think that because then you're in a you're you're in a different uh form of deception right there. Because all the devil has to do is make you think he doesn't exist and he has you right where he wants you. So I just wanted to add that so that people wouldn't see what's going on with her here and then say oh see i told you she's just a con artist or she's just an entertainer or what have you that is such an important point thank you for saying that jen yeah she's really getting some real information from real demons and that's what's super scary the h name come in helen hank harry someone's last name or a state they don't have to be passed they could be here in the physical world who just died I oh 
I can't stand the fishing with the letters. Did you ever know anybody connected to somebody with the letter J? The letter J. <laughs> I mean, she's this woman is she's grieving. She needs some help and some closure, and she's going to move on to the oldest mediumship trick in the book, the letters. And she's not even taking it. I mean, what are the chances that she doesn't know anyone with an H in their name? And right. so this is just mean. She's going to move on. Watch this. Like someone just died like two weeks ago, two months ago. I feel like I'm very, who's that? My mother. Thank you. Told, I feel like unexpected, but like you were prepared, but you weren't prepared. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> so please know this is your mom's way of acknowledging your emotions. Or. Are you the only son or the only? Either or, one way or the other, prepared, not prepared. <laughs> it's true. She did say that. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's true. The nerve. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, so you were either prepared for your mother's death or you weren't prepared, which is oh. true. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and then she, she let yeah. go. She let go of the H. She didn't even validate. Okay. Is your mother's name got an H? Where now, did I that go? Yeah, that's what I was wondering, Dee. Was that what led her over there that this guy was claiming the H thing? <laughs> Pick a card, any card. <laughs> you know, so. We can't be trusted with this, Dee. Yeah, no, it's, it's the old walnut shell game. It's just, it's such a con. Oldest son. Oldest son. Because when I hear my son, my son, my son, it is just my symbol for acknowledging the relationship and bond that you shared with your mother. Do you feel that you did not get the opportunity to say goodbye to her? Yes. She says, I don't want you to feel that way. Please know that everything and anything that you said to her in your own personal thoughts and or prayers, please know that she has heard. I feel like the one day you didn't go there, she died. That's what she just said to me. She goes, my kid's there every single day. Is that correct? Always called, always this. She says, the one day. She says, but how do you say goodbye to your children? So she says, I do not want you to feel bad about that. And I want you to thank you for all of the things that you did for me. Thank you. So that was amazing. Thank you, Teresa. Um, thank you for doing I'm not convinced that he bought into that last part, mm -hmm. that he was there all the time. But it, it doesn't mean that that's not true. He could have. I'm just looking at his face. However, that would be, I really do believe that one day was a demonic message there because that meant you know not that wasn't I don't think that necessarily was to circle back on the whole guilt shame thing even though there was an aspect of that there I think that was something because there are some people that see their folks all the time and then there is that one day that they just didn't go or uh whatever and there's always a you know an excuse for that that could have been a really demonic message there for him uh, from a demon pretending to be his mother or what have you. And then you have that other part of it that plays again on the heartstrings, the shame and the guilt. And it's just all these lies and truth and emotions and everything just wrapped up. And I, I hate to even use the word truth when we speak about it, even we know that's how the devil speaks, right? But he does half truths, but he there is no truth in him. I'd rather say accuracy, something that, mm. act, you know, something that was accurate because there's no truth in, in the devil. Wow, you're right. That's such a good point. Yeah. Oh, this is painful to watch, but <laughs> this is, it's important for those of us like yourself and myself, Jen, who know the inside and the outside of psychic work to help others to see what's going on here behind the scenes. In the description below, I've got links to videos about the difference between Roman Catholicism and Protestantism. Even though we seem to share a lot of the same materials in the Bible, there's vast differences theologically to the point where they even have a different set of commandments than our Ten Commandments. And Roman Catholics equate church tradition to be on par with the same authority as the Bible. They also put the Pope as the same as Jesus Christ. So there's big theological differences. And even then, the Roman Catholic Church agrees with Protestantism about the sin of mediumship. Listen to what their catechism says. The official catechism of the Catholic Church says in number 2116, all forms of divination are to be rejected, recourse to Satan or demons, conjuring up the dead, or other practices falsely supposed to, quote, unveil, unquote, the future consulting horoscopes, astrology, palm reading, interpretation of omens and lots, the phenomenon of clairvoyance, and recourse to mediums all conceal a desire for power 
over time, history, and in the last analysis, other human beings, as well as a wish to conciliate hidden powers. They contradict the honor, respect, and loving fear that we owe to God alone. Interesting, huh? Very interesting. So Teresa Caputo trying to comfort her audience, and maybe even herself by saying, oh, I'm a practicing Catholic. She's not. She's violating the catechism of the Roman Catholic Church by being a medium. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, um, that just goes back to the point again. And I just want to mention this. You see this all the time, unfortunately, on social media, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, people calling themselves Christian witches. So whatever denomination you're calling yourself, uh, you are associating yourself with God in by calling yourself that but you're so far from God and it is a horrible deception. And again, there is no such thing as a Catholic medium, as a Christian, witch, a Christian medium, a Christian psychic advisor, it, you cannot drink out of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. It is not a thing. So please avoid it uh, at all costs and come to Christ today. You can't deny that element of entertainment. So when people are, calling her an entertainer you can't deny that element there with even the clapping and the thank you and you know listen I have no problem with applauding somebody after something or but I mean that that's that's sad because you have this goal of helping people this compassion I mean you're dealing with people that are lonely depressed uh, they had these loose ties, if you will. That's where the guilt and the shame thing came. They have these loose ties, things that they're always thinking about and they're looking for comfort and they're looking for confidence to let go of some of these things and they're not going to get it here. And then you, you, and then you put on the lights and the cameras and all this stuff. And it's mind blowing to me. Mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah, it is mind blowing. And I used to go on these talk shows all the time and what happens is if you're a psychic going on TV, everybody who works at that station wants a reading from you. So I would be at the TV station all day long with a line of producers, cameramen, directors, the hosts themselves. And they would one after another come in. So they put me in a little green room, which is what they call the backstage room. And one after another, they would come in and I would give in free of charge just one after the other, maybe 25 readings. And so those hosts and the people who are there are also believers in mediumship and they they are her clients as well. So you see that with that gratitude. She probably before the beginning of the show just gave Kelly a reading about some deceased loved one she had. And so Kelly's gratitude's coming through, even though Kelly doesn't realize she was deceived by demons pretending to be her deceased loved ones. Terribly heartbreaking. That's what it is. And like I said before, it's really preying on victims. That's what it is. And that's what the devil does. And he doesn't care. The demons don't care. They hate man and they hate God and anything. That's what you need to understand. It will never, ever help you to see a medium. A medium cannot help you because they are directly communicating with demons who are hateful, who are evil, who do not care about you and just want to get you away from God. That's the bottom line. That's their agenda. And it's important to know that. And it is so heartbreaking. I remember not only being a psychic D, but also getting readings. I don't know if you got readings as well from oh, some yeah. colleagues or what have you. I mean, we would, you know, like I said, I mean, Teresa and I, and I really, I really honestly pray for her and every other medium that I certainly rolled with and every other medium that you rolled with and every other medium that's out there. We've got to pray for their souls that Jesus would set them free. It's gone on for such a long time, but it did for me too. And Jesus saved me at the age of 37. It's never too late to put your faith and trust in Lord Jesus. He surely will forgive you your sins that would be behind you. When you come to him and believe in him with all of your heart, that he died for your sin, that he was buried and raised the third day, when you confess that with your mouth, you repent fully for the life that you've lived, for all that you've done, the sin that you are really in bondage to without Christ. Apart from Christ, you're an enemy of God, just like those demons are. But you have the opportunity while you have breath in your lungs, while you're alive, 
you have an opportunity today. Today could be your day of salvation. Those demons, their fate is sealed and they want you to join them, but you don't have to do that. God so loved the world that he gave his only son and whomever would believe in him would have eternal life and not perish. And you can have that today. Turn away from all of this. When we talk to the dead, it takes our eyes off of Jesus. It takes our eyes off of the gospel that Jesus had to die in our place to take the wrath that we all deserve. So God loves us. And when we do mediumship, whether as the medium or the participant, the receiver, we're opening ourselves up to demons who are posing as deceased people. We can't talk to deceased people. I mean, we can talk to them, but they can't hear us. They can't talk back. Jesus explained this in his story of Lazarus and the rich man. When the rich man who died an unrepentant sinner was cast into hell and he was not able to communicate with his brothers on earth and warn them, it was too late for him. And this was not a parable because Jesus used a real name, Lazarus, not the Lazarus of Martha and Mary, who he raised from the dead. This is a different Lazarus. And that Lazarus went to heaven. And also there was no communication with him either. So the point is that mediumship is not doing anything except for giving false hope and false comfort, which is dangerous because it points people to getting messages from demons who will then take advantage of grieving people by giving them other messages that are contrary to scripture and point them away from the gospel. So mediumship and psychic ability are not gifts from God. You might be sensitive. You might be compassionate. There's definitely a gift of mercy that can play in this, but there's no gift of mediumship. There's no gift of psychic ability. Teresa Caputo and other psychics may argue that, well, I was born this way. God gave me this gift of being psychic and a medium, so therefore God must approve of it. And you know what? I used to also argue that. I thought, well, I've had this amazing ability to see and talk to deceased people since I was a child. So God must have given me this gift. I must be able to use it for him to help people, to comfort them when they're grieving. And therefore, God must approve of this because I'm helping people to be happy. And you know, my background is I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in psychology before I got my master's in theology. And I used to be a psychotherapist sitting with people who were just grieving over their loved ones. And then when I became a medium professionally, I saw that their grief process was healed so much quicker than psychotherapy. So again, I thought, well, God must approve of this. And it wasn't until I studied the entire Bible in context, Old and New Testament, and really understood that not only does God condemn mediumship, he condemns people who are mediums, like I was, like you were, Jen, like Teresa is. He calls people who practice mediumship a detestable abomination to him. And we truly pray for whatever you're going through in your heart, but we serve a God who is awesome, mighty, loving, forgiving, and big enough to carry your burdens for you. And the only one who can give you peace and comfort in your time of need that will last. It will be everlasting. That's true peace. These, When you go to the medium, you're going to have to keep going because you'll never get it and you'll never be fulfilled. Only Christ can fulfill your heart.